Welcome Texans. Thank you for joining our second virtual session today, primarily focused uh, to address some of the concerns, uh, questions with our faculty and staff. And I first wanna say uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join virtually today. Uh, we wish that we were meeting face to face and we were in an auditorium having these types of conversations, but the crazy world around us uh, defined as COVID-19 or the coronavirus as we know it um, has prohibited those things. I am joined today uh, by Kent Styron. He is director of our risk management and compliance here at Tarleton State University. Also, Dr. Karen Murray, she serves as our provost. And Ms. Lori Beatty, our chief financial officer for the institution. And our hopes today is, is to um, address some of the, the general questions that we've had, uh, the more common theme questions that have uh, come to our attention, and just to have some, some interaction with you, albeit virtual. Um, I wanna start by saying thank you to our faculty and staff. We just concluded a session I think was very productive uh, with our students. I wanna thank you for, um, for, for really rallying around something that none of us really ask for. Uh, we stand united as one. Um, we have to have that mentality and, and attitude moving forward. None of you asked for this. None of us here today asked for this. None of our students asked for this situation. And so uh, it is what it is. We're here. Um, it's unprecedented. It's uncharted waters that we're gonna navigate. But nonetheless, we have a, an obligation to navigate uh, for our students. I also want to thank the leadership of our federal, state, and Texas A&M system officials. Uh, in particular, Chancellor uh, Sharp and his team, they've been incredible uh, for us throughout this process. They have disseminated uh, information as quickly as possible. Uh, it's a lot of information. Uh, we're, we're, hit, we're getting hit consistently with new data, uh, new information from the federal level, from the state level, and certainly from a local level. We have uh, an obligation, a moral ethical and social obligation to protect this community and to protect our community of Texans. And I want to thank you for that. I especially want to thank our staff members who have been here literally uh, night and day going above the call of duty to ensure that we have a safe learning environment and that the, the safety, um, health and well-being of our students, faculty and staff is above all other decisions and all other matters at this point. Um, it's, it's been a remarkable Texan effort to watch um, and to be part of, and I, and I sincerely appreciate that. I want to start with, with Kent Styron, and Kent, can you give us an update uh, where we are in terms of campus preparation, uh, our preparedness as folks continue to trickle back onto campus? We, we do have students that are here that literally um, had nowhere else to go, that returned from spring break. This is their home. We have to be mindful of that. And also, as we prepare for stack, faculty and staff, they've returned this week. Um, uh, and so talk us through, where are we in steps of being ready for Monday? Well, I think we're ready. Uh, we've been working with SSC, our facility services partner, in disinfecting our buildings daily and concentrating on the touch points within our buildings, like our doorknobs and the handrails, our tables and things of that nature. Uh, you know, we would just ask that individuals as they come back to work to take a personal responsibility for your personal and workspaces. Clean and disinfect those items closest to you regularly. Um, your cell phone, that's a key thing because you have it with you all the time. Car keys, keyboards, office telephones, desks, any hard surfaces, try to clean those within your personal space at home and also your space in your workplace. Uh, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds on a regular, regular basis. CDC has constantly uh, mess given us the message that we must uh, wash your hands frequently and hand sanitizer is not a substitute for washing your hands. Um, you know, so I would just ask that people take a personal re responsibility for their areas where they're working because the, the CDC stresses that constantly. Talk to us about, we, we're hearing the term social distancing a lot, right? And, and everyone has a different definition of, of social distancing. Even though we have CDC parameters and guidelines, right. I'm seeing social distance uh, <laughs> in, in varied forms right now, or social distancing in varied forms. How does social distancing uh, look on our campus moving forward? And talk to us about the expectations 
with faculty, staff, and students on Monday in terms of social distancing? Well, again, if you go back to CDC, they're requesting us to keep a six-foot distance between ourselves and others. And in practice, I can tell you, if you look at our library, we've reduced the number of workstations within our library so that you can't sit any closer than six feet uh, to anyone else. We've removed tables. We've done a deep cleaning in that area, uh, disinfecting primarily um, with our SSC services group, but also an external vendor so that we're prepared in those areas. But social distancing is gonna, again, you're gonna have to take a personal responsibility within your work areas to make sure that you're thinking about that ahead of time before you put people in a space. I also wanna commend you and your team um, Cecilia, everyone that's been so involved in keeping this, our website up to date. We, we've been commended um, in a lot of different places for um, our response and, and the ability to post things quickly, meaning information that we have gathered or garnered from various sources. I want to thank you for, for the time and effort that you've put into ensuring that we do have a safe a uh, clean environment. I mean, that's first and foremost and the well-being of, of our students. A lot of folks don't realize that even last week during our first spring break week, we had a lot of students still on campus. Sure. A lot of these students stay here because they're continuing to work. Um, they choose not to go home. Um, and, and sometimes our environment is the best, best environment for these students. And I think we have to be very sensitive. Sure. This is their refuge. This is the safest refuge that they have, and we need to always keep that in mind. Do you have any other tips for staff members? Um, we've talked some about uh, faculty and staff, but, but what else do you have ahead of Monday that we should be mindful of? Well, I would just say between now and then, if you have questions or concerns about the area, there are spaces that you're gonna be working in, give our office a call. We'll be more than happy to walk through those areas with you. I would ask everyone to, you know, stay up to date with our coronavirus website. That's where the most up-to-date information is gonna reside. You know, this week we, we provided a link on the website so that people could send their personal emails to us with their questions and concerns. And we've received uh, well over 250 questions this week, emails, individual emails. And we've responded to each and one and every one of those on a personal basis. So I would just ask them to use that as a resource to ask questions that may not already be considered in the FAQ section. Thank you. Well, Dr. Murray, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been interesting to say the least. I wanna commend you and the faculty in particularly for um, your due diligence, the, the additional time and this quick learning curve that, that some of our faculty members have uh, to adapt to, um, adjust to with this new online virtual model that we're moving to. Tell us what Monday morning looks like from, from an academic a learning enterprise, if you will. Uh, what can our faculty, staff, and students expect on Monday morning? I wanna start first before I launch into that by sending a special thank you to a team of people who've been working behind the scenes. We have an office on campus called the Center of Instructional Innovation, the CII. Mm -hmm. And those staff have been in super mode since the middle of last week when we learned that this was the path we were gonna take as an institution. They did not take their Thursday and Friday off. They have been doing yeoman's work, getting ready for this process to occur. They've planned a very rigorous and detailed set of uh, trainings for our faculty. We have some faculty who are very adept at online learning. They've been doing it for years. We have some that are novice online faculty members and they needed a lot of support during this week to get ready. And so that team has been 24 seven helping to get our faculty ready for what we're going to embark on next Monday morning. Ideally on Monday morning, students, if you've never logged into campus, you will go to the homepage of Tarleton's website and there will be a video there helping you to log into campus for Canvas for the first time. 
Canvas is our online learning system that we use at Tarleton so that we can deliver courses to you virtually or at a distance. So when you log into Canvas for the first time, and I, let me assure you it's easy to do once you've watched that video, each of your courses should be published in there for you to see. So faculty, please remember to go in and take that last step. I know you've been working on these courses, getting them ready. Please remember to go into that last step and actually publish your courses so that your students can see them because until you do that, they won't be available to them. So students, once you walk into your courses, one of the first things I want you to explore are the syllabi associated with those courses. Each syllabus has been modified to include the changes that will help that course be transformed into an online learning environment. Some of your assignments may have changed slightly to make them more compatible with the online learning environment. And certainly with the loss of, loss of this week of instruction, some of the due dates will also have changed. So you should see them there in the Canvas platform. You should be able to communicate with your faculty members in Canvas, but please remember they're also available to you through those traditional means of phone call or email that may be set up for you to communicate with your faculty members. So explore those, look and see what's different about your courses and what's changing about them to make them more compatible with this online learning environment and then begin to communicate with those faculty members in that fashion. One uh, certainty that we, we, we know will occur over the next few weeks, our faculty truly become the face of this institution. We will have very little interface, uh, very little interaction with our, with our students. And I think it's imperative that we remind our, our faculty just how important this responsibility is. You truly will, will be interfacing with these students more so than most, most any of us will have an opportunity. And I, and I want you to, to take that very seriously, as I know you do. Um, so many of you have sent emails and messages to me of encouragement, and, and I appreciate that. I just want to encourage you. I know that you have a daunting task ahead. I do want to, want to answer one of the questions that, that um, Jared and I discussed a, a couple days ago concerning do we plan on remaining um, on an online virtual uh, platform for the remainder of the year, or are we hoping to transition after the deadline of, of the 10th? And that's really a fluid situation and a, and a fluid answer. I wished I had a better answer. My hopes um, were to that this would quickly come and go. Um, I'm overly optimistic on most things. It, it most likely uh, is, is trending toward us being online for the remainder of the session uh, or the semester. We will make that, um, that decision on a permanent uh, basis by April, the, somewhere between the 3rd and the 5th. Uh, we've been encouraged to remain steadfast, to continue to analyze, and to continue to determine the scope of need. I think extending the spring break by a week was tremendously helpful uh, from a faculty and staff uh, standpoint to prepare. Uh, but most likely we will be transitioning. It looks like that that's where society is moving. Um, and this coronavirus just simply isn't slowing down. It, it, in fact, it's just the adverse of that. So I would want to, to uh, in, in the, for the sake of transparency, share with our faculty members, we need to be preparing to finish the semester on a virtual platform. Lori, talk to us. We've, I've gotten several questions. Uh, we've received several questions through our COVID-19 website concerning staff members, um, work from home, virtual workspace, et cetera. Can you talk to us a little about what that looks like. I know it's changing daily, sure. both at a federal and state regulatory, uh, uh, ma from a regulatory manner to um, system um, recommendations. Talk to us about what that looks like here at Tarleton. Sure. So um, we do have a couple of options in place for our faculty, I mean, I'm sorry, our staff to um, 
adjust their work schedule or their work location based on their individual needs um, during this time. With uh, our campus being open, it does require that we have some staff on campus. Um, and so I would just encourage uh, staff to work with your supervisor um, to determine if an alternate work location or an alternate work schedule is best for you. There are processes in place to do that. Um, I, I will remind us all um, that an alternate work location um, is not leave. We are, still, uh, we are still working and still compensated for working by the state of Texas and our students who pay tuition. And we need to take that responsibility of good stewardship very seriously and be mindful of being as productive as possible in an alternate work location and um, be mindful of what we're posting on social media during break times, during the work day, so that we don't give the perception that this is time off. Um, this is still work. There's still plenty of work to be done across our campus. Um, and so uh, just using that time wisely. But your supervisor has information on the alternate work location process. Um, it is available to anyone who needs it, um, whether that's for a medical reason, um, concern, lack of childcare, um, whatever reason it is that you need it, that is available to you. So if a, if a faculty or, or student or staff member doesn't have a, a laptop or an adequate laptop to uh, meet the expectation of virtual workplace, uh, virtual teaching or virtual learning, what are some of the steps that the university is putting into place? Sure, so we have pulled together all of the um, inventory of laptops that we currently had available to us as well as um, placed an order for an additional 100 laptops for the university. Um, we have been pro prioritizing that availability for um, staff with uh, faculty and staff with a medical reason to um, to isolate from campus um, but we have so many of our faculty and staff who are already mobile working from a desktop or um, or a tablet environment so um, IT is prepared to help with that um, and your supervisor can connect you with that resource um, but it, we do not feel like there's a shortage at this point Along those lines, I have some questions from, from various faculty and staff and students. If they need assistance, for example, um, accessing the T drive from home, uh, how can they get technical assistance uh, to, to enable that for the, on their computer? Sure, so from the Tarleton webpage, you can go to the computer help desk um, uh, page, and there's information there about connecting to um, campus through a virtual private network or a VPN. There are instructions there on how to set that up. The help desk is also open for you, so you can contact the help desk either uh, through telephone or email and they can walk you through that process. Also, if you're working on campus, you might consider pulling um, files that are important to you over to a Simplicity drive. That is a file sharing um, product that we use across campus. Um, that can be a little easier to log into from a Wi-Fi connection if bandwidth is an issue. So um, that resource is available as well, and it's also outlined on that computer help desk site. Absolutely. And this may be for Dr. Murray or yourself. I, I got a question. Will I still be able to come to my classroom? I'm assuming this, is, this could be from a faculty or student. To use the equipment for my Zoom sessions, uh, just in case there are some other issues at home, et cetera. So, uh, yeah. Let me start by addressing it from a faculty perspective. First of all, we've committed to all faculty that you may have access to your offices on campus. There may be equipment in there that you need uh, in order to continue to work on your courses and transforming your courses. Many faculty have incorporated a technique called synchronous Zoom into their classes. So they're going to want all of their students to Zoom in at the same time to observe some sort of lecture or demonstration as a part of that process. So each dean and each department head have been working with their faculty to determine which classrooms we will still have available for faculty to go in and conduct a synchronous Zoom session using equipment in those classrooms. And so those have been determined and we've uh, shared those with others on campus so that we know which classrooms we want to keep open. Now please keep in mind that is not for students to come in and sit in on that class because it is not a way that we can assure 
uh, your safety and proper social distancing. You will need to zoom into that class, but for faculty, those will be available for you to conduct your sessions with equipment that you are accustomed to. If I've heard some really neat and innovation, uh, innovative ideas coming out of, of like nursing for their labs and et cetera, um, can you talk to us a little about your expectation for those faculty members that, that we know are well versed in teaching virtually, teaching online? Are we creating any, any type of peer mentorship program? I know you've thought a lot and you've talked a lot about that in cabinet meetings. So our, uh, I mentioned earlier our Center of Instructional Innovation. Each college has a faculty member who is deemed a faculty fellow in the Center of Instructional Innovation. And every few years we rotate new faculty into those roles. So those faculty fellows in each college are a primary resource for all other faculty. And we've sort of relied heavily on some of our former faculty fellows who are particularly gifted in distance learning and innovative learning techniques to make them available to their colleagues within their colleges. So we've set up those types of, of pyramid support groups from faculty to faculty and we've sent those out and distributed them to their colleagues within their, their colleges and their departments. Perfect. Ken, if we have um, a faculty, staff, or student that's, that's part of our Texan family that feels like that they may have contracted the virus. Um, can you talk to us a little about, I've, I've, I've got questions from, from both faculty, staff, and students um, concerning what, what do we do, right? I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of mixed messages of where to go, not from the institution necessarily, but, but just for, from all sources of of media, right? So, so what do we know here? What is our Tarleton procedure? So if you or a family member does not feel well, then just stay at home and self-isolate. And if you or a family member tests positive, then we just ask you to keep your family at home, contact your family health provider over the phone initially, or you may use MD Live. Um, it's an electronic service for medical services. That way you can obtain the best course of action for your specific health situation at that point. And they would advise you where you can be tested if your symptoms actually are, um, meet all the uh, boxes as far as uh, coronavirus. Perfect. Laura, any final comments um, for faculty and staff in particular? Sure, I just wanted to mention if you have student workers in your department, um, it is our goal to keep our student work, our current student workers employed and um, working so that we can continue to compensate them. So I would encourage you to um, look for projects that they can do even remotely. Um, it may not be exactly tied to what they normally do on a regular basis and that's okay, but look for ways that we can keep those students employed. If you're struggling to find those, um, they exist across other divisions. We as the vice presidents have brainstormed some of those. So reach out through your chain of command and look for ways that they can help across your division or across the university so that we can keep those students employed and keep that source of income for them. Dr. Murray, any final comments? Yes. You don't make this monumental of a transition from a predominantly face-to-face -face learning environment and residential campus to a virtual campus without some hiccups. So to both our students and faculty, I encourage patience, tolerance, encouragement. There, the learning curve is steep here, so everyone help each other out. We've got a lot of room to grow with this, um, and we need to look at it in that type of opportunity. Well said. Kent? I would just say, as a Tarleton alum, I'm just grateful. Um, I've seen a lot of acts of, of help and, and service over the last se several weeks, and it's just wonderful to see the campus community come together in this time of need. And so I just appreciate the faculty and staff and being there and being ready to support our students. That's well said. And I want to close by thanking, again, our, our students, our faculty, and our staff pulling together uh, under this mantra, United as One, that uh, was really cast as, as, as an NCAA initiative with some of our students and student athletes, and, and now it's kind of resonating among all institutions that, that, that has absolutely nothing to do with athletics, right? We're, we truly are united as one as we 
we fight this, this novel disease, this, this novel virus. Um, a lot of you have sent me uh, texts and tweets and uh, DMs and, um, and messages about some of the things that you're reading with, with this social distancing. Um, one of our vice presidents on my cabinet, uh, Lon Reisman, shared this book with me, and it's, it's titled Managing, Making the Most of Transitions. Um, it's by William Bridges and Susan Bridges. It's, it's a great book, especially for now. And, and I'm into this book, and, and I want to close with this. In the early stages, it talks about the three phases of transition. The first transition is, is it's called ending, losing, and letting go. We have to let go of the fact that this is the new normal, at least for now. Right? It doesn't have to define us, and it doesn't have to be the new normal forever. But it is the new normal in which we're living in now. And then you move into what's defined as the neutral zone. Uh, the neutral zone is, is where I think we are. Um, it's, it's our current status. And it's, it's going through an in-between time when the old is gone, uh, but the new isn't fully operational. And we're certainly not fully operational. We do have a learning curve. And, and like Provost Murray alluded to earlier, we will have some bumps in the road. We ask for patience. And then the final phase is the new beginning. Um, and as we think about a new beginning, uh, we, we need to use this as an opportunity, an opportunity not only to, to become a better institution, but to really, as Ken alluded to, to join together, uh, to help one another, to assist one another. It's not the time for us to throw rocks at one another. It's not the time to tear down. It's a time to build up. None of you asked for this. None of us um, here today asked for this. This was something that was thrust upon us, and we are, we're, we're in this place of leadership, all of us. Uh, we have a, a, an incredible opportunity and responsibility to our students. Um, and that's what makes Texans Texan, Texans. So I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate your uh, willingness to go above and beyond. Please reach out to us. If you have a resource, if you have a need, let us know, let us help. We can't fix issues if we don't know about them. So in conclusion, Godspeed, continue to bleed purple, and roll Texans.